Hello and welcome to Flory Models Kit View Time. Today we've got Despay's Reciprocating Sander. Now I think it's a little bit of a holy grail uh, for us modelers. Sanding is one of those things where it's just laborious and normally we've just got normal sanders and we're scrubbing and for years I've been thinking probably like a lot of people wouldn't it be handy if you had a tool to be able to do it. Now a lot of us have used various little drills and mini drills and you can put sanders attachments onto it but it doesn't do that what you need it to do to get into an area to sand out or something in a quite a small confined space you need some something designed to actually do it. Is this it? I don't know because I say I haven't used it. It is still sealed but I thought it'd be a good one where we do a proper on test with this and see if this is the holy grail for modelling along with putty that dries totally flush and with no sinkage. All right or is this just another little bit of a gimmick and sounds good but don't really make a mass improvement over using a normal sander. So anyway I thought with today we'd find out. So down in the box as you can see, we've just got the pack. Talks about on the back what's actually in it. All right, so down in here, it states that we've actually got obviously the little drill itself. Uh, we've got a little USB charger for it, a self adhesive sanding sheet, and different heads which are going to go on the end of it. All right, so again, we've got like an arch type one, we've got right angles, we've got sort of you know various flat ones and different sizes and shapes all the way through. So that's what we've got down in here so we will cut our way in i feel and into here so the part number for this one is es-a it's as simple as that all right so we get that out of the way then how do we get in here oh it slides out all right so you've got a sleeve within a sleeve and in here uh, obviously you've got various things down here sander will automatically stop once the charging cord is connected uh, function key will not response blah 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 right okay and then we've got a very nice case for it down in here keeping it all safe so down in here we have we've got some stickers so obviously for sticking your things on we've got packs down in here of the actual sander stuff themselves so and then we've got the item itself. Let me get that in here. It's in a little plastic bag, which again, I'll just cut my way into. All right, so usual thing from display. This is, feels like plastic actually, not metal, which is unusual. And then down in here, we've actually got, let me get the top off. Is it not just pull off? Is there a clue to this? No. Oh, this pull off. Bit tight fit. We've got it. It feels very light. It's plastic. It's not like the normal way where they're solid and all of that. And there we have it. So the weird I think is about is I don't know what I was expecting, but this isn't it. All right. I was expecting it to be one a lot more heavier, a bit like their drill is uh, and things like that. And obviously, you know, clues in the name I know, but it said it's a reciprocating saw. So it's actually going just in and out, in and out. And then it stops. That's not what I thought it was going to be. I thought it was going to be a little bit more like a sort of a random orbital sander. So you had a sort of situation in here where it's going to do lots of little circles or something else like that. But actually it's not. It's just going in and out and in and out. All right. So that's it down in here. You've got USB-C charging port on the back. You've got your button on the front. You press it once. We get little lights going through here. And obviously they're changing colour. Then if we press it twice goes up to the next speed off and then if we go three nope. sorry I thought it did three speeds it's lighting up it's not doing much there you go sorry so yeah it's three speeds so press once one press again two and three and this is just a led multi-changing light i thought it might be something to do with the speed to be honest it, it doesn't feel too bad all right so 
So there we go, that's that bit down in there. Again, because it's made of plastic, it doesn't have that heavy duty weighted feel that perhaps we've seen with some of our other items. So back in the case, we got the case just down in here. We've got everything else. So you've got your USB-A to USB-C charging port there. Apparently it does come fully charged as well. And then down in here, we've got all the various shapes. So as you can see down in here, we've got a right angle. And then over here, we've got like a half pipe type of effect. All right. And then obviously all your other ones. This one's like a triangle type pad, getting those type areas. And then down in here, we've got more of a flat type pad. And then we've got slightly bigger, bigger again, bigger again. And I assume this is the curved one. There we go. So you've got a nice sort of curved area on that as well. All right. So that's those just like that, which is fair enough. All right. So continuing our little trip down in here, this is the 180. Looks like we've got the sheets then, which are sanding sheets of this. Which again, let's get this out. There we go. So we've got a uh, self adhesive sheets and you can probably see by the design, we've got them all on there. But again, so you've got your 100, sorry, 1000 grit there. Then we've got a 800. I assume we'll have a 600. Then we'll get a four. There we go, four. And then last up, we've got a 280 and a 180 sanding sheets. All right, so you've got those down in there. I assume this one in here is exactly the same. I assume this is going to be just a copy. So you've got two packs of. So again, yeah, same thing. So we've got 180, exactly the same of those as well. So overall, looking at the grits and the design. So if we pick out probably the higher grit one's going to be the easiest one for you guys to see because it will show the white. So as you can see, you've got big old squares down the back here. Obviously, that's for using on something like this. All right, and then down in here, they're getting smaller and smaller. You've got the triangle ones, and then we've got the little ones, and then they get slightly bigger at the end. And these are all going to fit these different sized feet. My only slight concern is, and I don't know how well the camera's going to pick it up, but each one of these feet looks like they've got a sink mark in it. So you can see where they've injection molded in it. And because of us modelers are used to this, you know full well, if you've got a thick bit of plastic behind the, a flat bit like this, you can expect a sink mark. And there's definitely one in that. There's definitely one in that. You can see it in the light a little bit. And again, it just feels like it's slightly, it's not flat. It'd be interesting to see how well it works with the paper on. And I assume on the smaller ones and things, you don't really notice it. But these corner ones don't look too bad, to be honest. A little iron one. But the iron one, you probably see there's a slight sink mark in the bottom there. And that's because of this moulding of the top part coming in. So obviously, we're not going to get a perfect flat bottom onto this. So just to test this out, let's go for something around about... Uh, what do we got? We don't want to rip our way through. We want to do something. What's that? Four. Is that 600? 600 is a good grip for what we do. All right, so what we'll do is we're going to pinch one of these squares here. So we've got a little square, then we're going to come along with them here and we're going to stick it on. All right, that's quite a good one. I want to use a little thin one. I want to try that thin little guy there. So I assume the whole point of having the stickers with the numbers on is that what you can actually do is, oh, that's not the right one. That's going to be a bigger one. Oh no. Now I'm out of step with it all. So this must be the size one. All right, well, one of those little, little ones, which is just down in here. Because actually, to be honest, I've got a perfect contest for this. All right, so we'll just come in, stick that on. All right, so what you've got is you've got these sheets here. So I'm assuming, as we know, we've just got you 600 grit. What you can actually do then, you can pinch one of these little stickers and you can come along and you can then stick this onto your, your part. So you know you've got a 600 grit on there. All right. So again, when you change them, you can change these over. But I think most of us, like our sanders, will just have our preferred attack with it and away we go. All right. So what we'll do is we're going to 
put this in. So again, it's keyed, so sort of it goes in. So with a push on there, just like that, we can then get it going. That's all right. So that's one of those on. So let's clear a little bit of space. And what we'll do is we're going to grab. So hopefully you can see, I've got a little ejector pins just down in here. So actually I thought this might be a good test for this. So we'll try it at the slow speed. So it's definitely doing it. Probably needs to be a little bit higher. Let's try a slightly more speed. There you go, that's properly getting rid of that one. So again, I'm not trying to lean on the sounder too much. Higher speed. Definitely works better at a higher speed. So you see, we've got a deject spin just down in here. It's not deep. So we'll just try and get it in here. That works quite well. And we'll just go over here. sanded those out just like that pretty straightforward so with that in mind what I'm going to do now is just going to have a go using a normal sander so this is clean up ahead one of my old ones I used to do all right and we just see what the difference is so again coming along and the time involved and the pressure and stuff like that does it do anything better? Okay, that's one done. And uh, we'll just get this top one. So, fair challenge, I feel, for both of these. Last bit, and in here. So there we go. That's both of those taken out. The only thing I would say is you can probably see when you're using a normal sander and you're just coming along, you're keeping it nice and even. And if I come in and polish this off a bit. So you've got a nice even wear, not much damage. You can probably see in here, because of the way this is working, you'd have to get used to it a little bit because you can probably see it's got a little well, you've made little depressions in certain areas where that's nice and smooth because you're using it as a bigger, you're not. Admittedly, I'm using a smaller sander. So what we'll do is we'll just switch that out and we'll just try it with a bigger one on. There's the big foot. Just to see how this works in here. I get the thing to go on. Let's just move this one out of it. It's probably a little bit too big. And it's going to be as fair as I can with it. So there we go. What do we think? 
I'm honestly, I think a normal sand has done a better job just down in there than it has done in here. And then obviously the thing is with this, well, the skinny sand is they're designed to fit five mil, anything that's five mil and under, they used to be able to go in and quite easily take out this type of thing between uh, areas. The trouble with this one, because it's reciprocating, as in it's going in and out, it's moving, as you can probably see on the back here, around about, I would say, what's that? Probably three mil, maybe a little bit more, four mil at a time, probably three mil. So the trouble is you can't get it into this area. If it was just perhaps just slightly vibrating and oscillating a little bit, you would be okay. But because it's actually reciprocating, as in going in and out like this, it's not going to be able to get into a tight area because it's always going to be buffing up against areas. So getting into tiny little areas is going to be a bit of a problem. Last up, we're just going to check this. Is it self-clean? I rub it on my jeans. They are. So the pad, the actual sanding pads are very good quality because they are self-cleaning, which means they easily clean straight off with no problem at all. It means your sanders last a really long time. But again, I don't know. This is one of those tools where I can't work out if it actually takes longer than it actually should. If we just come down in here. I'm just There we go, trying to clean it up a little bit. I don't know, it's one of those ones, I still maintain it's probably quicker with a sander to do it with a sander than it is to actually, you know, come in and, and sort this out. I think by the time you come in and with a bit of a polish up in here, look, it's probably just gonna be equally as well. All right, so, you know, you've got that thing, to be honest, I need, uh, need a little something to sort of just test on here. Uh -huh. Just trying to find a little bit of something uh, that doesn't really matter. Come on, Bustine, come out of retirement. So, you know, for instance, if we were to be doing it on here, we can probably see this because we've got some paint on here. If we go for a number two speed, Again, it's nice, it's fine. The, the sandpaper, to be honest, is really good quality. And it feels very, very smooth. And you can see it just gently worked its way through there. But is it any quicker than just coming along and literally just, you know, doing it that way? You know what I mean? It's, it's almost like they've invented a tool that doesn't actually do anything more than anything else you know it's actually one of those situations where i can't work out if it's you know one of those ones where you think yeah i definitely use it right one more i've just got down in here we've got a bit of a you know where we've done some well horrible things all right so we're gonna go full speed i'm just gonna try and just work an area Again, I think it, I honestly um, sort of, I don't know. This is one of those tools, which is really strange because is it making anything easier? Technically, you come along with your sander. If you've got something like this, let's say you were getting rid of here, you just pop the sander in and you give it a rub. And 
you know and am I I'm doing it quicker I'm doing it a, a lot more cleanly I feel than the tools doing it and again this is that thing about you know you know how much pressure to put down onto this one you know exactly how far you're going to go with it how much you you know you could really be putting pressure onto it and that's the other thing as well with this one as you can see there's a nice little job there with this as soon as you add too much pressure even on power three it just stops you know and it is fully charged by the way all right so again yeah it's it's a very very difficult one on this one where would you use it where it's going to be better than using any type of sander i'm quite limited i think on where you could do um, because most times especially with skinnies and things you get to small areas you're doing bigger areas you need something a little bit bigger than what this one's got anyway so the biggest foot that this one's got was this one which in the scale of things is how big which is a one centimeter foot all right so it's 10 millimeters uh, onto that um, and I just feel like I can clear more quicker with everything the grit is basically the same as well if you're thinking the grits are different the grits are the same so again I think it's one of those tools where if you're somebody who struggles in a particular thing like with sanding and you just can't be bothered use one of these I still think you'll be hard pushed to beat using a normal mechanical sander or a small reciprocating sander something else like that you know um, so it's good I think for doing small little jobs but then I would worry about you know obviously ruining any detail that's around it so for instance if you've got riveting detail we're currently working on the Apache if you're into a situation where you're giving it a sand and you've got riveting detail and this because of the reciprocation is knocking off your rivets then it's going to be a bit of a pain so you wouldn't want to use it and to be honest I've got nowhere I can use it on this one to see if it's working good all right so again it's one of those ones where I can't see it as an improvement over anything we're doing right here if I'm just being honest I think you're probably better off still with a sander and doing it mechanically if you've got a problem and can't use a sander and you want to use something like this again I think yes it does do it I just don't think it does it well it needs more power I think this entire unit it feels quite light I think it needs a stronger motor inside it that actually draws this a bit more um, and I think really you know like a random orbit type sander the way that that works with the circling and all the rest of it is a better way than sanding than just forward and back this would make a good saw put a thing onto it and just cut things then yeah I get it but not for sanding at the end of the day I think it's just one of those tools which has been invented and sounds like a good idea but actually at the end of the day it's not improving your modeling it's not saving you time because it's quicker as we've just shown to use a sanding stick than it is uh, to actually use the tool so unfortunately I can't go out and highly recommend this and it's a notice game changer and everything else like that because clearly it's not it's fixing a problem that technically is not already there but again it would be nice if there was a tool where you could do it and for sanding and if you had seam lines and you know you wanted to keep it nice and flat you could just do this and go across it this I'm sure would do it but it's going to take forever I and mean, if you're like me and you're a speed modeler and all the rest of it you want things that can just get in and get going with it the other problem with this one as well if you're doing certain shapes you've got to come in you've got to keep it flat so again I can't get in from this way particularly and I can't get in from this way particularly so I'm going to have to go sideways which is fine because I can get into it but you need to keep the tool level otherwise you're just going to be digging a trench with it and because of the reciprocating nature you are going to dig a trench all right and that's what I was finding when we were doing with these whereas with a sander you're more used to it you're just flat going in taking care of the ejection pin mark and away you go so anyway that is the display saw as i'm going to call it because technically i don't think it makes a very good sander